Hi, and welcome to a video um, of a program I've been developing to produce a polyphonic um, synth in Sonic Pi, which can be played by means of a MIDI keyboard or any other suitable MIDI or controller with uh, separate keys for uh, which can be allocated to different notes. Um, this program is developed from one which I produced first of all last August for an eight note polyphony um, synth uh, which had quite a few extra features added to it and um, which was uh, quite, a, quite a large program and it would only run successfully on a more powerful computer like uh, a Mac. Um, this one though has specifically been developed so that it will run on um, a Pi 3 and this is what I'm using at the present. There's a Pi 3 uh, in a Pi, so Pi Sound box with a Pi Sound card on top of it. The Pi Sound card adds uh, a nice um, um, audio amplifier, uh, which also has uh, two inputs to it, and also it has a MIDI um, input and output on the end here. Although in this particular case, I'm using a MIDI keyboard which uses um, a USB input, which is being fed into one of the USB uh, ports on the Pi Sound. The red lead here goes to an external amplifier, which is on the uh, left here, and that is fed to some studio speakers, uh, which you can't see um, on the screen, but which are above the, uh, the monitor here. So, um, why do we actually do this? Well, <coughs> the uh, on Sonic Pi, normally when you use uh, one of the built-in synths, <coughs> you have to specify the pitch that you want it to sound at, and also the duration for which you want the sound to last. This That can be done by either just using a release parameter or by using uh, a sustain parameter and a, and a release parameter together. But uh, the, the, the point is you have to specify the duration of the note as you start playing it. Now that is obviously not very convenient when you want to play a keyboard because in that case you want um, the uh, program to run so that when you press the key the note will start to sound and it will stop sounding when you release the key again. So let's start the program and see um, how this works. So I've got a keyboard here just out of shot and if we do um, Alt R that will start the program running. And now if we try that again, I'll press the same key. You can see that the note lasts for as long as I press the key down. If I press it very short like that. And also you can see that it uh, works with polyphony with more than one input at a time. And in fact, in this program, you can in fact be brutal with it and put the whole keyboard in at one go or the black notes like that and it's quite happy to to cope with that. Um, so how how does this actually work and uh, what is uh, going to be the use of the program? Well first of all there are a couple of extra features which I've added. The first is that it will respond to the pitch bend wheel over here while the note is playing. So if I play a chord with my left hand and then with my right hand I move the pitch bend key up and down You can see that the pitch bend works. And the second thing is because I've got various other rotary uh, controls on this keyboard, which is an M Audio Oxygen 8 ver uh, version 2, quite an old keyboard, but uh, nevertheless quite useful, uh, then we can actually allocate one of these. And I've chosen this one here. And we can use MIDI CC control change signals, which Sonic Pi can detect. And by using, uh, looking at the position of this rotary knob, I can actually change the synth which is playing. At the moment, it is playing with the tri synth. You probably can't read that a bit, a bit too small, but it says synth tri selected. If I move it round, it will eventually change there to say synth saw selected, and that gives a different sound. There's the saw, there's the tri. You can hear the difference. And if I go around a bit further, there's the saw again. A bit further around, it says synth TB303 selected. And if I go all the way around, we get synth FM selected, which actually, <coughs> with the default settings for that um, synth, plays an octave lower. And again, the 
pitch bend works there. Now I've written uh, an accompanying article to this video which explains in detail how the program actually works. Um, I've got it set to quite a large text size so that you hopefully you can read some of the screen on the left here uh, where the program window is and if I scroll right from one end of the program down to the other you can see that it's not particularly long there's 94 lines there and there are some gaps um, in them so um, basically uh, what it does is first of all to have um, a live loop here which is called Live Loop Choose Synth. And as the name implies, that looks at a MIDI uh, control change signal being detected. You may be able to see uh, on here that there are some asterisks in this um, uh, string to be matched. In fact, when you actually get a control change coming down, we'll see if we can find one in the log here. Here's the pitch bend changes, uh, so it's the control change we want, which is the um, one for choosing the thing. Let's see if we've got any there um, further up. Uh, no, it obviously didn't change, but what we'll do is we'll just change it there and you'll see them coming in at the bottom. There we are, lots of control change um, for the synth. And you can see it says MIDI USB oxygen version 2 MIDI slash 2 slash 1. Now that gives you the name of the device. It gives you the port and the channel. I'm not really interested in that. I want it to respond whatever MIDI controller I'm using and hence the asterisks which are wild cards here. I've set this knob which is going to change control change channel 10. And you can see that the control change number 10 is there and that is what that is looking for down here. It gets a number which comes in which is between um, <coughs> 0 and 127 and I scale that number to a range of 0 to 3 as an integer and simply use that to choose the synth from a list of four synths there. That, it doesn't have to be those synths, you can use other ones if you want. <coughs> And we use the set command to store the chosen synth with um, a symbol synth pointing to it. And that can be got back again. In fact, I get it back here using get synth to print on the screen synth source selected. So that's the first live loop. The second live loop does the same thing but looks at the pitch bend wheel here. And that responds to a message uh, syncing on MIDI, again the wild cards, pitch bend. And pitch bend uh, produces a number in the range naught up to about 32,000. And um, here what I'm doing is, sorry, 16,000. And here what I'm doing is to take the number and to scale it um, so that it goes in a range um, minus 12 to plus 12. And um, that is used to allow a, a change of note pitch of up or down an octave. Uh, the whole thing is put in, the, the playing part is put inside um, a reverb setting, just to give a bit more interest to the note. And here is the first of the three live loops which are to do with um, getting the note information. This one's called MIDI note on. And what this does is it waits until we get a sync from a MIDI note on message, which will happen each time we press a key. And this will give a note, uh, uh, a link here, which has got two pieces of information, 72, which is the pitch of the note, and 54, which is the velocity with which I hit the note. If I do it very quietly, that gives 7220. And if I do it much louder, that gives 7288 and if I really belt it 72121 and so you'll notice that all of those numbers are bigger than zero when I release the note it sends 72 the pitch zero so what we do is we detect we read these two pieces of information into the variables note and on if on is greater than zero it means we've just pressed the key and what it does is it checks to see whether that note is already sounding because it's going to keep a record in a list NV of all the note values which are sounding. If it isn't, it says I'm going to start playing this note. 
it takes the second uh, variable on and scales it in the range 0 to 1 and that's going to be used to set the volume of the note which it's going to play. It then marks that particular pitch as playing. It gets the synth back. Remember we set that um, using a set synth command back in the synth select route, uh, uh, live loop. And then it starts to play a note uh, using the pitch, which is uh, down here, 72, that's been received and varying that with any value which has been set by the pitch bend um, uh, signal. Um, it starts this note up as a long note lasting for up to 100 seconds. That could be uh, longer if you want, but if things go wrong, then it's probably better not to have it too long uh, there. And that's all it's going to do is just going to start the note. We're going to deal with what happens while the note is running a bit later on. So having done that, it st uh, stores the reference to that note so that we can get it back again when we want to kill it or to modify it by the pitch bend control. And it stores the uh, note value and its velocity or its volume rather in a list called on notes. Now, if we just release the, um, the, the key, then on is going to be zero. And in this case, it checks to see whether that particular pitch is already playing. If it is, it says, right, I'm stopping it playing. It sets that back to zero. And it adds uh, to a list called kill list the information uh, of which note to kill, which is just the pitch of the note there. It doesn't kill it here because I want that loop to be as fast as it can so that it's ready for the next key to be pressed. If you're pressing two or three at once, it's got to process very, very rapidly. And if you do too much in the loop, it will miss uh, subsequent key presses because they've happened before it gets back to the top of the loop. So we have two further loops, one called live loop processing or process note rather. And that is going to deal with uh, checking to see whether the pitch bend control has been pushed. I'm not going to go through the detail of that, um, but you, it is described fully in the article. But basically what it does is it looks at the list of notes which are playing and it takes them one by one and it starts a thread which will run while the note is still playing. And in that loop, it's going to get the value for the control parameter for that loop and it's going to continuously check the note and uh, the, particularly the pitch bend reading, and it's going to change it if it has changed. And that's how it responds to the pitch bend. Now, um, eventually the key is released and that loop will stop when the uh, value in K0 changes from one to zero again. And it has a second part to this loop, which is strictly speaking should not be necessary. But in practice, I find that it does have to be. Uh, although we have a separate loop, which is set up to kill the note as soon as possible when the key is released, occasionally it will miss one of those because it's still processing the last one. And so this is a sort of belt and braces where when the key, uh, it realizes that that key is not pressed, it's going to get the, um, parameter for the note it's going to change its amplitude to zero fade it out so that it stops clicks happening and then it's going to kill it now sonic pi is quite forgiving if something is already killed it sends a message like this one up here saying not killing sound 1061 because it's already killed but that's all it does it just mildly objects but it does actually allow you to try and kill it again but either way it makes sure that it is killed and the final live loop down here, which is called note kill, is going to um, kill the note by looking at the list of notes to be killed, which remember we added up here. Whenever a note stopped playing, we pushed the note value into a list called kill list. What it's going to do is going to take the next value it can from that list. It's going to get the um, uh, parameter for the control pointer and it's going to put the value of the notes amplitude down to zero and then kill it. Now that should manage to do all of them, but if it misses one, then that which is a slightly slower loop is going to pick it up and have a second whammy at killing it. And as you can see, the whole program works quite nicely.
So I hope you've enjoyed watching it. At the foot of this video in the description underneath there is a link to the article and also to where you can get the code and try it out on your own um, Raspberry Pi. Uh, just a word about uh, latency. If you haven't got something like the Pi Sound Amplifier on there and if you're using the built-in one you will find it will probably work but it will be rather sluggish. There will be quite a lot of audio latency. In other words, you hear the note quite a long time after you've pressed the key. You really need something like the Pi Sound board here to, uh, which is designed to give a very, very rapid response in the amplifier, very low latency and as you can hear it works pretty immediately there and there's no uh, not much any discernible lag between you playing and the note sounding. So hope you've enjoyed the video. Bye for now.